Welcome to the RYM Student Podcast, helping you fit God's truth into your life. Reflecting on biblical truth is vital for the life of the believer. We hope this podcast will encourage you in your walk with Jesus. The following was recorded at one of the Formed Youth Ministries conferences. The audio might not be clear, but the message is. We hope you enjoy it. Jesus dripped with the Word. Now, this is a strange um, sort of point, but Jesus, even though He was the Word made flesh, used the Word pretty powerfully. And here's what I mean by that. We actually only have 1,800 of Jesus' words. It's interesting. In my mind, Jesus should have been born today. And we could have videotaped the whole thing. We could have, like, periscoped the whole deal, right? And recorded it. And there could be no debate. Like, we could go back and watch the resurrection and all this. But God, in God's mind, and for good reasons, that was the best time. But you would think we would have more than 1,800 words. All of you are writing much longer than 1,800 word essays in your class. We only have 1,800 words of Jesus and 180 of them are him quoting the Old Testament. I sort of really mean this as, a, as not a cynic. I know what the Old Testament says. I need some new words. But that isn't really what God thought. God decided that 10% of what He would record of what Jesus spoke on earth would be Jesus quoting the Old Testament. That's an amazing fact. Jesus is dripping with the Word. He was saturated with the Word. The main fortification, the main way that Christ was strengthened in His mission on earth, the main way He helped His own heart was with Scripture. Even though He was Himself the Word made flesh, what do I mean by that? For instance, Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, He was hungry. Man, you talk about an understatement. He fasted four days, a little bit hungry. I mean, guys, you don't eat for 40 days, you're not walking. I mean, it's just, you're, you're, done, you're basically dead. It's almost in a medical impossibility. So the tempter came to him and said, If you're the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Personal commentary. If this is me, I'm Jesus. I'm like, talk to the hand, shut up. And he had the power to, he had the right to. You just go, whoop, and the devil would have frozen like a movie. That's what he could have done. Like, I got to get something to eat. I got to get my sugar level up. Then I can deal with you. I just need a little space. And then we can have this conversation. That's how we'd all done it. Jesus answered, It's written, Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Jesus made the devil. He created the scriptures. He planned the situation and decided for your sake to read a Bible verse at this point. It's an incredibly difficult moment in his life. He has no energy. He's about to die physically. He's starving. He has a massive headache. Massive headache. Probably sunburned, been in the desert. He spent the whole 40 days out there on the beach with nobody. And he says, let me tell you what the Bible says. It's crazy. So the devil heard then took him to the holy city and had him stand at the highest point of the temple. If you're the son of God, he said, throw yourself down for it's written. He will command his angels concerning you and they will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. So the devil says, all right, I can play this game. You're going to Bible verse me. I'm going to Bible verse you. You've done this in the hallway with some of your Baptist friends before. (laughs) And so Jesus doubled down. It's also written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. Let me tell you something about a dad. This is not my best lesson as a dad. And your dads are the same with your moms. You can ask me the question twice in my house, but you can't ask me the question three times. Dad, can I have a cookie? No. Dad, can I have a cookie? No. Dad, can I? Then there's just screaming and anger and sin. That's what happens. Just explosion, righteous indignation, and shame spreading. We just dip, we just dip into that shame bucket and we just sling it. <laughs> Right there in the kitchen. We just sling that shame. Jesus said, Away from me, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve Him only. The devil left him and angels came and attended him. Which, by the way, is crazy. The passage the devil quoted is fulfilled. He said he will send his angels to take care of you, and they do. It's crazy. Now look, if Jesus needs the Bible to grow and walk as a Christian and to survive temptation, I bet that we do too. I'm betting that we need the Scriptures to fortify ourselves in our moments of temptation. Look, 
Jesus dripped with the Bible. It's crazy that He did. I mean, because He is the Bible. And He's showing us that unless we choose to hear and know the Bible, we're going to struggle to walk with Him. We're going to struggle to be the people we'd like to be. Jesus used the Bible to strengthen His own relationship with His Father, which was perfect. It's a mystery wrapped in an enigma, but it's beautiful. For more information on RYM Student Conferences, visit rym.org forward slash conferences.